in contemporary open economies with efficient capital markets if any firm exploits investment opportunities efficiently the firm's stock market value can be increased substantially now how it can be happen to understand this let's see an example we have a uh, two company sample in our example with certain information where expected earning per share is five dollars dividend payout is hundred percent this means that is there is no retention or flowback this means that the b in this particular case is equal to zero dividend payout is hundred percent then reinvestment is zero percent the perpetual dividend per share is five dollars market capitalization rate is 12.5 percent so the share price is equal to the simply uh, d1 over k we have no g this means that there is no dividend growth rate because there is no reinvestment policy the resulting value is 40 dollars uh, this 40 dollar says that no growth in the company's value this means that no change in capital stock and earning power over the time to come therefore there is no growth in the dividend that particular strategy is termed as a no growth strategy or zero growth strategy because we don't see any growth rate in our example all of the earnings are paid out as dividends without any retention or flowing back so in this particular case dividend cash flows are the simple perpetuity now we have the opposite of no growth strategy this means we have reinvestment plans that we have growth strategy in this particular case now assume that uh, one company starts a project with ROI of 15% this means that the return on investment on this particular project is equal to 15%. This is greater than our cost of capital or K which is 12.5%. Now low dividend payouts that shows that the company uh, will reduce the dividend payouts in order to have some reinvestment plans. So there will be some retention, there will be some flowback. So, the dividend payout is low then the 15% return on investment for the owners and if full dividend payout is there then 12.5% by shareholders on their individual investment this means that if there is a low dividend payout the company has certain reinvestment plans inside the company inside that particular project and that project will earn 15% ROI for the company's shareholders and if the company pays full earnings at the dividend shareholders will have no choice but to earn only the 12.5 percent as the k now we have new retention policy by this company which is 60 percent this means that dividend payout will be 40 percent so the new dividend per share will be equal to two dollars per share now what will be the effect of this growth strategy on the company's share price definitely the stock price of this particular company will go high now we have two types of reinvestment plans low reinvestment plan low reinvestment rate plan and high reinvestment rate plan what is the implication of these two let's see under low reinvestment rate plans there are higher dividends in the initial period and low dividend growth rates under higher investment reinvestment rate plans there are uh, higher dividends higher dividend growth rates backed by the higher reinvestment of the earnings and that reinvestment of earnings enhances the stock value more high if we see the graphical application of these two reinvestment plan we can see in our uh, example where the black upward curve shows 
the higher reinvestment plan and the lower uh below upward curve shows the lower reinvestment plan we see that the dividend per share is higher in the uh higher reinvestment plan and that is increasing over the lower reinvestment plan by a higher rate Now, how much growth can be there if the company has a certain reinvestment plan? We have an example uh, in continuation of our earlier example. Now, we have outstanding shares in number of 3 million, initial investment of $100 million, return on investment or return on equity of 15%. We have total earnings of 15 million. So the earnings per share we have five dollars. A reinvestment at the rate of sixty percent means we have a nine million profit to be reinvested or flow back in the company. This means that percentage increase in the asset would be equal to fifteen point one five into six million, and that is again equal to nine percent. With this nine percent more asset the company will earn more profit by 9% and it will pay out 9% dividend more to its shareholders now what will be the dividend growth rate which is g to determine dividend growth rate we need to multiply return in equity with the flowing back ratio which is equal to 60% and the return on equity is equal to 15% so the value of g or the growth rate is equal to 9% now we can determine the uh, stock price of this uh, firm uh, we have formula of d1 over k minus g now we have d1 of equal to two dollars so we have k of 12.5 percent and we have now determined the g that is nine percent the resulting value is 57.14 dollars so we see that under no growth strategy the value of the firm's stock was equal to 40 dollars per share and un under growth strategy the value of the firm is equal to 57.14 dollar per share so with the inception of the growth strategy the per share value stock value stock price of this company has increased by 17.14 dollars present value of growth opportunities we see that the decreased payouts and the higher flowbacks increases stock price by 17.14 dollars as we have earlier seen this means that the planned reinvestment provide expected return greater than the k the investment opportunities with positive net present value raise the company's worth this npv is also called as the present value of growth opportunities and how to determine present value of growth opportunities uh, we have a formula that is the value of a firm is equal to value of a firm having no growth plus the present value of growth opportunity or pv go so when we add up these two variables the resulting value comes to the value of the firm if we put our numeric values in these in this model we see that p naught is equal to e1 over k here e1 is the earnings per share and k is the capitalization rate plus we will be adding their present value of growth opportunities we see that our earnings per share are equal to five dollar and our k is equal to 12.5 percent and the present value of growth opportunities we had just computed that is 17.40 dollars so solving this model it gives us the value of 15.57.14 uh, dollars and again this is the value over the value if the firm has no reinvestment plans or the no growth plan now one thing to be noted that the growth is not the investors desire 
the growth raises firm value only in a case where the project's return on investment is greater than the firm's cost of capital now to understand this we have another example the sister concern of our recent company in the example has an roe of 12.5% which is equal to k that is 12.5% and that k is the cost of capital of the company in our example so the company's cost of capital is equal to its sister concerns return on equity so in this in that particular case the present value of growth opportunity is equal to zero because the plowing bag is equal to zero and the growth rate is also equal to zero therefore the present value of this company will be computed using the perpetuity phenomena and that is e1 over k the e1 is five dollar and k is equal to 12.5 percent this is this gives us the value of forty dollars now assume that there is a certain amount of flowing back of the profit and that is sixty percent now to determine g we again need to multiply return on equity of the project with the uh, project's co firm's cost of projects flow back ratio and the return on equity of the sister concern is 12.5 percent and its flowing back ratio is 60 percent so the growth rate for the sister's concern or the sister company is 7.5 percent now we can determine the present uh, uh, stock price of this sister company using the con uh, constant growth div uh, dividend discount model which is d1 over k minus g now again d1 is equal to 2 and k is equal to 12.5 percent whereas in now the company has growth rate of 7.5 percent and the resulting figure is 40 dollars per share we again see that if we determine the present value of growth opportunities of uh, this sister company we need to determine the uh, e1 over k from p naught this means that the value under both the variables is the same that is 40 dollars the resulting value is zero so in that particular case the present value of growth opportunities for this sister concern is equal to zero the reason is that the roe of the sister company is equal to its parent company's cost of capital now reinvestment just maintains the stock price then there is no increase in the firm value why because this project's ROI is just equal to the firm's cost of capital that is K. Reinvestment can only be justified if the project's return on investment is greater than the firm's cost of capital. Flowing back is non-beneficial if the present value of growth opportunity is equal to zero. This means the firm has no growth strategy or it is equal to a no growth strategy. The implication of no growth strategy is certain that is the mature aged firms with considerable cash flows but limited investment opportunities are termed as the cash cows because at this stage with no profitable opportunities the matured firms raised cash flows are available for the shareholders for a certain period of time and that is the reason that without any new investment these cash flows are uh, milking by the shareholders so the firm is termed as the cash cow for its owners to understand this we have another example where earning per share is five dollars and earnings flowing back ratio is 60 percent ro is 10 percent capital capitalization rate is 15 percent the expected dividend per share is two dollars and present value of growth opportunities we need to determine now for that purpose we need to have the value of g we put the very a value of uh, roe and b into uh, the computation of g model 
we have six percent growth rate now with this we can determine the present value of the stock using d1 over k minus g resulting value is 22.22 dollars .22 per share now now we can determine the present value of growth opportunity uh, and if we see that p naught is equal to 12 22.22 dollars .22 per share and the value of growth opportunity is equal to uh, 5 divided by 15 the sum of this model is equal to negative 11.10 percent so this firm has negative present value of growth opportunities this means uh, the company's roe is lesser than its cost of capital or k so what is the implication for this negative present value of growth opportunities such firm is subject to the takeover policy by another firm and the buying firm's management will do what it will take over the firm it will have no retention plan and in this way the firm value will be increased the, because there will be some perpetuity of the earnings because all of the earnings will be paid out as dividend so the value of the firm will be equal to e1 plus k which is equal to five dollars per share over the capitalization rate of 15 percent and that is the value per share comes to 33 dollar per share so this way the new buyer has increased the value of the firm